This week on Mountain Bike Chronicles, we pioneer into the outskirts of Kamloops, British Columbia, in search of big mountain riding with James Dorfling and Garrett Bueller. Then we take you to the third UCI World Cup downhill race of the year in Leogang, Austria. All this and more coming up on Mountain Bike Chronicles. Just under an hour from the birthplace of free riding in Kamloops, James Dorfling and Garrett Bueller are using some unorthodox methods for hunting fresh big mountain terrain. There's no roads to get in, so we uh, just loaded up the tin boat and cruised across the lake to actually come check it out. Scoped the whole coastline, kind of just like scouring up at everything. Kind of helps, scoping from the water is pretty good because you can really see what's up there. If you're on land and you're walking around, you could easily miss something. We're finding it to be quite a useful tool. Most of the riding you generally do in Kamloops is quite like just right in town. You'd be driving down the highway and you'd see lines just anywhere. So this one's a little more remote, a little bit more of a mission to find it. kind of adds another element of risk for us to come in here and ride our bikes. If something was to go wrong, it'd be a bit of a mission out of here, but it's not like you get to ride this kind of stuff every day. We're in Leogang, Austria for the third stop of the UCI World Cup. The overall standings are tighter than ever before, with new names joining what used to be a very select top group. Last week in Fort William, two riders were on the podium for the first time in their career, Brooke McDonald and Danny Hart. I've been racing with Brooke since I was first year junior and we've battled it out since then. And there's, a, there's so many people that could be up there, you know, it could be different people every weekend. And for it to be us two that last weekend was just amazing, you know. Everyone's my competition, but you know who I mainly, mainly like to beat is Danny Hart, but you know, he's riding real good this year. I'd like to win, but I think it's going to be hard with Aaron Gwynn and all those guys here, so I'll be happy with a top five, top ten. It's funny now because I feel like I was an up and comer just a few years ago and there's like this whole group of kids that are right around 20 years old, a little bit younger, that are on the podium now. Hopefully we can take over at some point, get those old guys off the podium. <laughs> In a league that's been led by few, it will take more from each rider to be able to stand out from the crowd. It's Dorfling and Bueller's second day here and the zone has turned out to be better than they expected. Goal here was to find stuff that we could leave more or less completely natural. We didn't want to touch it too much with a shovel and just look at it and ride it. Having a session here, blasting down this face, getting these jumps behind us. Get some trains going, just have some fun.
off a successful trip. A gap over an abandoned mining road. It's good to go. We're just waiting on wind now to tear up. While Dorfling and Bueller have the luxury to wait for better weather, World Cup racers have to adapt to anything that Mother Nature throws at them. Austria is not known for its sunshine, and this weekend in Leogang is no exception. The teams have ways to stay ahead. Running dry tires first run, which was pretty, pretty slippery, so I went to a spike on the front and dry tire on the back, which is a lot better, like you're hooking up in the corners, front wheels can heaps more traction, so it's so much better. I don't know if it rains this afternoon, might go to back spike too, so we'll just wait and see. Steve Pete's mechanic has decided to modify their spike tires instead. Uh, a little change in direction this morning because of the weather. Uh, we're going to start just chopping up the spike, um, just making it a little bit faster rolling, uh, but still maintaining good grip in the, uh, in the dirt. Monkey's learned some tricks over the years. He modifies Gwyn's spikes for the weather change as well. Spike tires already, little, little secret cuts on them, but I won't show you that because it won't be a secret. Finals are up next. <laughs> Veteran racer Greg Minar set the pace with a strong run. Steve Smith was up next and unable to beat Minar's time. Steve and Paul, stoked. Dog in the top 10, he's got to be stoked. Consistent. It's good. Happy. Hart was up next. I left a fault with him last week and getting second and then coming here, which isn't my favourite track, and getting a six I'm over the moon really. 0.28 off the podium, which is nothing, you know. Just two riders were left. Oh yeah, first hit. Worked out great, couldn't be any smoother. Dorfling and Bueller have waited out the winds. The session was Woo! on. that no one's ever really even seen or ever thought of going over to, so it's quite the reward. Coming into this zone in the boat definitely makes it unique. So much natural terrain that hasn't even been seen around Kamloops yet, and we're kind of tapping into some new, some new stuff. As Dorfling and Bueller headed home, they knew that this was just the beginning. Back in Leo Gang, just two riders were left, G. Atherton and Aaron Gwynn. G was up first. Gwyn was the final rider down the hill. 
I'd rather have a run where I knew that I was going fast and had a crash instead of having a run where you cross the finish line with a good result, but you're like, mm, could have gone better. At the first split, he was up by over two seconds, flying at over 50 kilometers per hour down the track. are still hot on his heels for the overall title. Next time on Mountain Bike Chronicles, we stay in Leo Gang, Austria for the first gold contest of the FMB Tour, 26 Tricks. We'll be hanging with Andrea Lukanagi as he shows us what a weekend of freestyle biking is all about. Next Mountain Bike Chronicles.